open your Bible, we are still marching through the fruit of the Spirit. And this is a new month, and we're dealing with the word gentleness. Somebody say gentleness. Amen. Old school is called meekness. Amen. Amen. Meekness. So as we look to the Word of God, let's look to Psalms 37. Amen. And 1 through 3. Psalms 37. Verses 1 through 3. And once you found the word of God, could you please stand in reverence and respect for the word of God. Amen. Amen. Psalms 37. Verses 1 through 3 is printed on the screen as we look uh, to the word of God. You have the King James up. Amen. We'll be reading from the New International Version of the Scriptures. It simply says, do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither, and like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Amen. And since he had it up, we might as well read uh, the King James because I love the poetry of the text. Amen, somebody. Amen. As we look to uh, the word, we want to look at uh, the King James. Amen. Uh, and it simply says, fret not thyself because of evil doors, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they soon shall be cut down like the grass and withered as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. I want to put a tag on this text for some preaching possibilities. Simply the aftermath. The aftermath. Amen. Look to your left and to your right and tell your neighbor, neighbor, the aftermath. Approximately three and a half weeks ago, uh, the movie Straight Out of Compton premiered all over the country. It was the first biopic of its kind, telling the riveting story of the hip-hop group called N.W.A. N.W.A. changed culture, influenced hip-hop as we know it today, and literally transformed our society, whether we like it or not, uh, for a permanent, uh, lasting legacy. It was the first time, if you will, that we were able to see up close and personal the struggles and the successes that made them who they are today. There is one person in particular that I want us to highlight and to call our attention to. That is Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre is his stage name. Dr. Dre was the brains, if you will, and the creativity behind NWA. And he knew early on in his life that he had a calling, hear me now, to be an artist and a musician. And he found purpose in the creativity of his music. However, Dr. Dre was first blinded by his desire to do music that he didn't pay attention to the company that he kept. It was his creativity that was monetized for everybody except for himself, but it was the contaminating people that he associated with that kept him from becoming on his unto his own. Dr. Dre, if you will, was brilliant but was stifled by debilitating and dangerous dangerous characters as Suge Knight in portrayed as label partner and co-owner of Death Row Records that is portrayed as a ruthless thug who cared only about his own selfish anguidizements. However, Dr. Drake 
finally got fed up with the contamination and came to the realization that you can no longer continue to elevate to your destiny hanging around a contaminating people. So he made a decision to walk away from it all, leaving all royalties behind, all artists behind, because after all he created the first time, he can do it again. And I wish I can park there for somebody who often get uh, caught up because you lost everything. If God gave it to you the first time, God can give it to you again. I feel like preaching here. I ain't preached in about a month, so I feel my help already coming. After going through hell and high water, losing his brother to violence, hooking up with the wrong people, he named his new label, hear me now, aftermath. Aftermath means the consequence or the after effects of a significant unpleasant event. Uh, Dr. Dre has some significant unpleasant events uh, happen in his life, but his after effects uh, work together for his good. Uh, hear me if you will. He went through hell early on, uh, but now later on he signed Detroit rapper Eminem, Queens rapper 50 Cent, both crediting him for their successes. Dr. Dre, a kid from Compton who came from nothing, started Beats Electronics, which was purchased by Apple for three billion dollars. Hear me if you will. It does not matter how you start. Uh, as long as you persevere to your purpose, uh, you can make something out of your life. In 2014, Dr. Dre was ranked as the second richest figure in American hip pop scene by Forbes magazine with a worth of $550 million. He topped off the list in 2015 with pre-tax dollars of $620 million. A rapper, a hip-hop artist, has not only changed culture, but yet has become one of the richest men in the world when he learned how to shed contaminating people out of his life. And those same contaminating people are still living lives of dysfunction and ruthlessness. There is a lesson in his life that you don't have to get revenge when you have purpose on your life. You can choose to focus on the pain, the problem, and the perplexities, or you can choose to focus on your problem, on your purpose, which has the power to alleviate all of the above. In order to elevate to your game and become what you are destined to be, you will have to come to the realization that weak people revenge, strong people forgive, and intelligent people ignore. I can't get no help in here. Let me say that again. Weak people revenge, strong people forgive, and intelligent people ignore. <laughs> Can I get a witness up in here? In order to elevate your game, you must become destined to the reality that God often has something for you when you focus on your purpose. Let me rush to my thesis. Don't rush to a conclusion on my destiny when you are not the author of my purpose. Life has a way of rushing to conclusions on you based upon what they see you in in the moment, not realizing that miracles are made up of messy moments. Life has a way of writing you off when there's more to your story. Life wants to count you out when God has already counted you in. Life wants to lay of my faith. I said, God, why is it that I've been faithful in those who are living raggedy spiritually? Because what you're saying is, is that God, I want you to whoop me until I learn how to surrender to you. Have I got a witness here? Uh, I'm scared of folk who say, I ain't getting fed. Well, you ain't eating because the food is already there. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, the problem in the text is that when you become a dichotomy of irony, Break that down, preacher. I'm glad to do so. Huh? Your enemy can get the best of you when you live a life that remains a contradiction of inconsistency. 
I'm going a little deep here. In other words, when you people cause you to react in a way that is ungodly and unchristian and you try to justify it because you have the peace that all passes all understanding but you got to give somebody a piece of your mind you're being a contradiction of inconsistencies if you really believe that God will fight all of your battles why are you always fighting with somebody have I got a witness here when your witness becomes so weak because you can't hold it together under critique and scrutiny. Let me tell somebody up in here who I live in critique and scrutiny every day of my life and I've learned that they don't critique you or scrutinize you unless you actually doing something. When you become the self-proclaimed humility person, and you get your humility confused with your entitlement, you become a contradiction of inconsistencies. When you self-destruct, when you declare everything is all right, you become a contradiction of inconsistencies. However, the Bible declares that you can overcome this challenge of contradiction of inconsistency by simply practicing gentleness. When you practice gentleness, you desire to get something based upon what God has for you. You understand that you don't have to get back anybody when you understand who's in charge of your life. Gentleness is also translated meekness, which does not involve weakness. Let me help somebody up in here because I don't respond to you. Don't mean I can't respond. I just choose not to because I'm practicing gentleness. Whether it involves humility and thankfulness towards God and a polite restraint behavior towards others. I'm going to have fun with gentleness this month because you got to realize when you have gentleness, you want to go off, but you restrain yourself uh, because you sound too dignified for that uh, you want to give somebody a piece of your mind but you say I got too much to lose uh, to do that right now uh, meekness or gentleness is control power uh, have you ever seen anybody oh bless his name thank you Holy Ghost my dad was the kind of man uh, who was always uh, always had the power to destroy anything if any man I was ever scared of it was my father uh, but one time I had an issue with my dad like most boys do and I thought I could take my dad uh, I was strong I was benching 350 I was, I was strong I thought I could take my dad and one day I walked in the room and I said to him I ain't gonna do it and I looked at him and all my dad had to do was look back at me he says, try it if you want to. i kill you. Ah! Every time he get that look now, he's, he gone in the grave. I'd see, oh Jesus. That's called restrained power. Are you hearing me here? First point in this text is that your response to others will be determined how much you trust in God. Hear me now. As people of God, you got to learn how to respond and not react to everything. Have I got a witness here? It's easy for you to react and give people a piece of your mind when they hurt you or betray you, but it does not bless you when you begin to fret over everything they do towards you. The word in the Bible in the Hebrew means to get hot. When you're responding to injustice, it can make you hot, but you got to learn how to respond strategically. Have I got a witness here? When you respond strategically, what you're literally doing is that you're giving witness that I trust God is still in charge of my affairs. Have I got a witness here? The second point in this text I'm about to let you go is simply you got to learn how to do good. Amen, somebody. Amen. Every person that I know who tried to do somebody in, they began to have the guilt live with them a lot longer than the act. 
But when you learn how to do good, God will give you unmerited favor. When you learn how to do good, God will begin to open up doors that you could not even imagine or see. And you were worried about what you was getting ready to go through. Huh? But because you remained faithful and you did good anyhow, huh? God began to elevate you above your enemies. Have I got a witness here? Huh? That's why you don't ever have to worry about what somebody do for you. But the best thing you can do for them is forgive them. Huh? Because when you forgive them, it releases the power that they have over you. Huh? But the longer you hold on to it, huh? every time you think about them, it's going to cause stress in your life. Huh? Every time you begin to reminisce over it, it's going to cause pain in your body. Huh? The best thing you can do, my beloved, is learn how to forgive. Huh? Have I got a witness here? Huh? So the Bible says... Huh? In Psalms 37, it says, Do not fret because of evil men, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they soon will wither. And like the green plants, they will soon die away. But verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord, and do good, and dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. The King James says, feed on his faithfulness. So my third point in this text is that while they are plotting your demise, you need to learn how to enjoy his security. Have I got a witness here? Because I read this text over and over again, and I didn't get what God was trying to say until I got to this word. And the Bible says, I need for you to dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Can I preach this like I feel it? How can I live in the same space when the wicked is trying to do me in? But God says, you forgot who I am. I am the author of your purpose and I control the destiny of your ending. So don't worry about who I'm living with or who I placed in the midst of you huh? because like the psalmist says uh, he will prepare a table before you huh? in the presence of your enemies huh? he will anoint your head with oil huh? have I got a witness in here huh? so when you understand huh, that the land you're living in huh, is governed by the almighty God huh? then you can give God praise huh? and you can enjoy the land huh? and feed on his faithfulness huh? as long as you are under his power and under his authority no weapon formed against you shall prosper as long as you're under his power and his authority the Bible says I once was young but now I'm old but I've never seen a righteous forsaken no a seed begging bread have I got a witness here that when you understand who God is that he's sovereign that he can reign on the just and the unjust uh, and he's a keeper of those who diligently seek him uh, you will understand that his faithfulness uh, will last a lifetime uh, have I got a witness here uh, that's why you got to learn uh, that it's not time for you to get even uh, but it's time for you to get God uh, because when you're trying to get even uh, you're going to do yourself some harm uh, but when you get God uh, my Bible says uh, for we know for we know that all things work together for the good for them that love God and are called according to his purpose have I got a witness here that when you get even you're going to get a mess but when you get God you understand the Bible says that blessings and mercy come for those who love the God have I got a witness here when you're trying to get even huh? you're gonna get some misery and mayhem huh? but when you get God huh? you will understand the Bible says uh, wait on the Lord uh, and be of good courage uh, and he shall uh, strengthen thine heart uh, is there anybody in here uh, who can testify this morning uh, that God is uh, my source uh, and God is my strength uh, he's my time uh, and he's my will uh, in the middle of a will uh, 
And once you understand who God is, you can say like the old school songwriter says, I've seen the lightning flashing and I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of my Savior telling me to still fight on. He promised never to leave me alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me alone. Because the old writer says, and he walks with me. And he'll talk with me. And he'll tell me that I am his own. Is there anybody in here? who's been through some trials. Uh, is there anybody in here uh, who's been through some heartaches? Uh, is there anybody in here uh, who's been through some stuff? Uh, is there anybody in here uh, who's been lied on? Uh, is there anybody in here uh, who's been scandalized? Uh, but yet through it all, uh, through it all, uh, I've learned uh, to trust in Jesus. Uh, I've learned uh, to trust in God and excuse me but this is from me because can't nobody can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord is there anybody in here who know the Lord will make a way out of no way God bless you may the Lord God keep you that's my prayer but when you get God, he'll give you peace that passes all understanding. Come on and say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Come on and give him praise. Give him praise. Yes. Give him praise. Yes. Give him praise. Hey. Hey, hey, give him praise, hallelujah, 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 bless the Lord, mm. bless the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't worry about what you can't control. But remain faithful that even through the rough seasons, God will work it for your good. And they'll be wondering why you ain't went off yet. And you'll be able to testify, it ain't me, but it's God that's keeping me. Keep loving old folk. Keep treating people right. And God will allow you to dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. People will be wondering, say, how can you be happy? And I, I, I did you like that. Because you're not the author of my happiness. God is. As we stand on all over the building, as we prepare our hearts to extend this invitation to Christian discipleship. We believe God today that there is a man, woman, a boy, a girl who have not yet made the decision that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord in your life. I believe that there's a man, woman, boy, or girl in here who know God 